Hello and welcome to a festive edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Today's exciting programme is a gift wrap selection box of practical demonstrations and exercises to inspire your artistic passion and encourage you to try something new. So grab a mince pie and settle back for 60 colourful minutes of the latest creative tips and techniques from some of today's most popular leading artists. Let's get started and take a closer look at what festive treats are coming up on today's programme. Popular watercolour artist Marilyn Alice unwraps some of her favourite artistic essentials. Marion Dutton demonstrates some of her dazzling oil techniques in our regular Try Your Hand Out feature. Fraser Scarf pulls a Christmas cracker with his top glazing tips. And popular watercolour artist Jeff Kersey gift wraps another one of his handy hints. But before all that I'm going to show you how to paint a nice festive snowy landscape. I've got the paper prepared, I've got all my colours, water and everything ready to go. Get the sleeves up on the nice festive jumper. And what we'll do first actually is get a bit of masking tape, which I've removed the stickiness from by sticking it to a good festive jumper. And then we'll use this to create a bit of a snowy kind of hillside. I'm just going to make it look as though it changes direction a little bit as it comes across. So put a bit of a curve to it, but what you're looking for is a nice smooth curve as opposed to a very ragged one and a good seal, a good seal as well. You can use your fingernails to get in there if you need to. Okay, so I'm using a size 20 brush and I want to wet or dampen the paper. One thing you don't want to do is over soak it. So I'm looking at the side of this to make sure it's all covered. And really all I'm looking for is a bit of a shine. One thing I don't want is really, really wet paper. And then we're going to go for a bit of a nighttime feel to this, for this picture. And we'll start off with some natural yellow, medium strength, and just sweep up, but bring it up from the actual tape, because we need a, a clean line there. That's quite important for this, because it needs to show the white snow below it. And then we're going to go for some Prussian blue, which is a very, very powerful, look how vivid that is. That's some serious blue, that. I'm going to bring it in and sweep it down. And then I'm going to clean my brush, give it a bit of a squeeze through the tissue. And I'm just going to soften that down. So it blends into the yellow. Can you see it's getting a bit of a greeny tinge, but if you look at the nighttime skies, you quite often get that little bit of a greeny tinge, which is quite nice. And then we'll get some natural grey. Very dark again. And just put a couple of little bits of that in there. Just put a bit of darkness coming up from the snowy edge. Just get a bit more of that coming up from the edge there. The more work I do at the bottom, the more it's going to look snowy as we take the tape off. So that's a really good nighttime sky. But to give it an extra nighttime feel, we'll use a coin wrapped in tissue, make sure it's nice and tight, and then choose a good spot for the moon, probably just below the grey cloud there. Give it a bit of a stamp and then let go, and it should leave a nice moon there. Use the other side of the kitchen roll twisted into a little ball and then I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight, highlighted cloud but you need to sort of gently soften those in. One thing you don't want to do is all of a sudden just see a white line in your picture. You kind of wipe away the base of them so it just softens them into your picture and then every so often get a clean piece of kitchen roll and then do another one and so on. But I like to put these on, I think they add something to the picture. And again, it starts off looking like a bit of a white worm and then you just lightly pull it down, flick it downwards and it all softens it in there and it really makes a nice effect. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is very carefully take that tape away. Hopefully it won't rip. If it does, I'll stop. I'll use a hairdryer to get it off or go the other way. Then we'll add some shadows to the snow. 
So just using a uh, size 10 or 12 brush, water the Prussian blue down that you used in your sky, massively water it down, really pale. Bags and bags of water. And then put a big sweep in that corner, coming across. And I'm just going to bring it up slightly on that side as well. Then using water and a little bit of tissue to take the excess off. I'm going to water all this away until it completely fades to the white of the hillside there. So we're just going to water it all across until the whole thing fades away. So I'll keep going on that. You can see the snow scene there. Now, I'm just going to mix up a very pale, distant grey to paint in a very loose, distant village. And I'll leave that to dry while I do that. So it's just natural grey, very pale. And I'm just going to add a little bit of Prussian blue into that grey. And that's ready, bags of water, with a size 6 brush to paint in a distant loose village. So it's always good to get a little bit of tissue just to take the excess off and just going to paint in a bit of a distant village and a bit of a church or something to make it look a little bit on the festive side. It doesn't want too much for this though. So I'm just blocking in, trying to get the spire nice and straight. little bits of uh, lines and things on and then we'll paint on the other side of the church so this is like in the background so it's nice and misty and then just a random area of buildings chimney pots they always look good on the silhouettes and I'm just using a damp brush take the excess off on tissue I'm going to fade all this down until it mists away into the background there and then just using a small tree and texture brush same color not too soaking wet for this though just going to add in the corner there a bit of a sort of distant tree or bush or something and then just over that area as well there there we go clean that off back to the six just to finish off wipe it on tissue and then I'm just going to water all that away until it all disappears into the actual area below there there we go. Excellent. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll leave that to dry and we'll come back to it next week and put a nice Christmas tree and a few bits of finishing touches to it. Right, whilst I pop a few more presents under the tree, let's join popular watercolour artist Marilyn Alice as she unwraps a few more of her favourite artistic essentials. Right, let's take a look in my box and see two essential items that I always carry with me. One is my SAA membership card, but it has another use. And also um, a wax crayon, which is great for getting the water effect very easily without too much fiddling around. First of all, I'll show you how to use the card. Just mix up some very gungy paint. We use this blue, nice and thick, so a lot of paint hardly any water. I'm using a rough paper and I'm just going to load the card with paint, quite thick paint, on the edge and you just run that down the paper and you get these lovely, lovely straight lines that pick up on the bumps of the paper and it really just sort of fits in with your painting and if you want to make them slightly thicker for something that's straight but thick you can just pull that down a little bit as well, just get 
over the top of that. So some lovely, lovely, easy effects. Now another essential item is if you're painting water scenes and you've got that lovely glistening white light, how many times have you painted straight over what you intended to keep white? Just rub this waxy crayon over the water, not too hard, or you might find that you sort of have a great big white mass, but enough to get that sparkle. Some watery watercolour paint. Just run that over that. And the water sparkles through. So there you are, two essential items that I always keep in my art box. Some sparkling tips there, thanks Marilyn. Great to see one of the many benefits of SAA membership being brought to life in the studio. Right, time for us to take a little break now, folks, but join us in part two when we welcome Marion Dutton as she demonstrates some more of her dazzling oil techniques in our regular Try Your Hand Up feature. We'll see you very soon. <laughs>